Hello Indie Game fans, for as much as I love the Slay the Spire style of deck building roguelite, indie developers have really experimented with the deck building mechanic and have made excellent games as a result, with all of these being a refreshing change of pace. Let's begin with Dicey Dungeons, a game that is at this spot on the list not because it isn't good, but because it isn't quite a deck builder, but does often get grouped into this. Rather, what you are doing is getting items and equipment which functions like cards, which are then used by slotting dice into them, where I myself am never quite sure where to place this game. However, it's a fantastic title with a ton of variety, coming to us from some of the best people in gaming, so of course it gets a mention. Do not be fooled by the lo-fi look of Luck Be A Landlord, where this slot machine roguelite is very cleverly designed. While it doesn't look like a deck builder at all, you're actually picking and choosing items to add to the slot machine, all of which interact with each other and can even evolve under certain conditions. The goal of the game is to earn enough money to pay off your rent, which increases after every couple of rounds, but for how unique and clever a concept this is, it gets a spot, although do note that it is still in early access. A title that I love due to the art is Nowhere Profit, one that combines elements of many games that I'm sure you're familiar with, including FTL, Oregon Trail and Magic the Gathering among others. You are leading your caravan through a wasteland, getting into combat while ensuring that your people have enough food and resources to survive the trip. Each unit that you place on the battlefield is drawn from a deck where units can get injured or die in battle, which permanently removes them, with the win condition in combat to reduce the health of your opponent's commander to zero. As such, it's quite a strategic title, with perhaps one too many systems, but something of interest nonetheless. Your quest continues. What? Crush them! Our next title also doesn't exactly resemble a deck builder, where in Meteor Fall Kremit's Tale, you're picking items and weapons as the cards that you can control to be used in fighting enemies that drop down from the top of the board, being a great title worth a play. Come on, don't prove me wrong! One of the games that I came across very early in my YouTube journey is Book of Demons, having found this while it was still in early access and following it through up to 1.0. If you cannot already tell, this is very similar to Diablo 1, having you descending into the catacombs beneath a cathedral in order to battle a demon, where the deck building comes in the form of equipment and skills. As compared to many other games in the space, this is a real-time title where you need to move and click on enemies to attack, which, combined with deck building, makes this a different feeling action RPG. The darkness breeds a curse disdained, it's time to enter the Ring of Pain. A newfound friend is guiding you in dungeons that you're crawling through, a place in protest rushing out, fueled by fear, delusion, doubt. A great looking roguelite deck builder not like Slay the Spire is Ring of Pain, resembling more of a classic turn based RPG but using cards instead. The deck building portion comes in the form of loot and equipment, but a clever part of this game is the rotating carousel of cards that form the dungeon, adding some great tactical depth and new concepts to wrap your head around, all with a wonderful art style and some creepy monster designs. Darkness waits to prey on you. Observe the ring and strategize. Learn, adapt, or face their eyes. I have a gift on one condition. Quench the thirst. It's your audition. This is the guild of dungeoneering all across the land. They're cheering, oh, to be a dungeoneer. Chasing fame and glory. I have a very special surprise for you with Guild of Dungeoneering Ultimate Edition, a title from 2015 which did get a remaster into the Ultimate Edition in November this year. The most interesting part is that you are placing dungeon rooms, enemies, traps and loot, having to gently guide the adventurer without direct control of them. 
It also helps that the art style is fantastic, with a surprising amount of replayability with the guild aspect to build up, being one of the more unique games that I have come across. The newest title on this list is Fights in Tight Spaces, one where you play as a John Wick-like figure, having to battle enemies in thrilling sequences much like an action movie. However, this is fully turn-based and on the grid, where a hero has a variety of attacks and options at his disposal. You can be super aggressive with loads of strikes, more evasive with cards that allow you to dodge and weave, or even become a straight up wrestler with a grappling build. Enemies' intentions are shown to you, much like Into the Breach, so if you love that game, be sure to check this out. One of the best indie games from last year is Retropolis, a side-scrolling city builder that has you defending your kingdom against hordes of enemies, all with a fascinating deck-building twist. Instead of getting villagers to gather resources, you have buildings which passively generate gold which are used to play these cards, adding fortifications, recruiting soldiers and so on, all happening in real time. As such, you need to be constantly aware of what is going on, using active skills at the right time, in the right situation, or otherwise build and upgrade your base to tech up or to improve your economy. There are also six different leader characters which have their own playstyle, each with individual unlocks as well, resulting in a compelling gameplay loop. There are many stories in our past. Many interesting, but most untold. And though they may be forgotten one day, there will always be others to rise from the void. Speaking of loops, I just talked about the Switch launch of Loop Hero in this week's edition of Indie Gaming This Week, where I also remarked that it's another game that I'm not quite sure where to place, being a roguelite strategy deck builder base builder with idle and RPG elements. But the important part is that there is a deck building aspect, so it counts in my book. You are choosing buildings and enemy spawns, having a chance to draw and to place them on a map, since you need to voluntarily create danger for your hero in order for them to level up. It's a little cryptic in explaining some game mechanics, but it's a very clever title that is worth a play. Perhaps one of the classic examples of action deck builders is the Mega Man Battle Network series of games, where after a huge gap from Capcom, indie developers have decided to take things into their own hands to make their own, where the best of the lot so far is One Step from Eden. This has a Slay the Spire style overworld map, where you're travelling from node to node, fighting enemies, encountering random events and even going into shops, all on a quest to get to Eden. Combat is a highlight, where deck building affects available skills to you, some of which need to be manually aimed, 
all while moving and dodging enemy attacks and managing your energy resource, being very hectic but very fun. There are also a number of boss characters which can be recruited and then become playable, which means plenty of variety, and in the one year and nine months since its release, has had a couple of patches and improvements, so there's no better time to jump in if you have not picked this up. And of course, the no-brainer pick for this list is Inscription, a deck-building title with Magic the Gathering-style combat coming to us from developer Daniel Mullins, who is known for having a twist in his games, examples of which include Pony Island and The Hex. While it does have a little bit of a creepy aesthetic, I would not consider this to be a horror game, and without spoilers, what this game does is very clever indeed. It has quickly shut up at or near the top of Game of the Year discussions for many people, making this worth a play, taking the number one spot. For deck builders like Slay the Spire, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.